Hey everyone, and welcome back to this class, Convolutional Neural Networks, Deep Learning in Python, Part 3. In this section, we're going to start looking at the idea of convolution. Of course, in order to understand what a convolutional neural network is, you have to know two things, what a neural network is and what convolution is. Since you already know what a neural network is and how to build one, the next thing you have to understand is how convolution works. The next step is to put them together. In this lecture, I want to give you a zero math, low tech introduction to convolution in the real world. It may surprise you to learn that convolution is everywhere. One of my favorite examples is music. Hopefully everyone here likes music. So what I'm going to do is play a short clip and then apply some effects to it. So here's the loop with no effects. All right, now let's add an effect like echo. Let's make this uh, say 0.05. Okay, let's play it again. So we can hear the effect of the echo applied to this audio clip. So let's undo the echo now. Let's apply a new effect called reverb. So let's hit OK. All right, now I'm going to play this again. Okay, so the effect of reverb makes it kind of sound like you're in a hallway. So let me undo this. Let's do one more effect. It's called wah wah. So this one's going to be pretty apparent. Okay, so you see how the sound wave has changed a lot. <laughs> Okay, so those are three different audio effects that I've applied to this audio clip. So what just happened here? Well, in each of these examples, we had a different kind of filter, an echo filter, a reverb filter, and so on, and we applied these to the original signal, and we got out an output that sounded just a little bit different. The application of a filter to the input signal is an example of doing convolution. In fact, we are going to implement an echo filter very shortly. Let's do another example, but this time on images. All right, so I've opened up this program called Seashore that allows me to add some effects to the logo for this course. You can think of it as sort of a lightweight version of Photoshop. So let's go to the blur effect and let's apply a Gaussian blur to this image. Okay, we're actually going to apply the Gaussian blur in this course. So you'll see how we can implement something like this. Okay, you can change the radius of the blur. So if the radius is smaller, it's not blurred as much. If it's bigger, then it blurs more. Okay, let's cancel since you've already seen what it can do. And when we implement this, you're going to see exactly how radius affects the image. 
Let's also try edge detection. So we go to, I don't recall, stylize edges. Notice how this filter is able to detect all the edges in the image while leaving all the other non-edge areas as just a flat color. So we'll be looking at a filter that does this as well in this course. So just like our music example, this is the same thing, but with pictures instead of sound. We have different kinds of filters, like the blur filter, edge detector, and so on. We apply these filters to the input image using convolution, and we get a new image that is somewhat like the old image, but just a little different due to the effect of the filter. So what can we conclude from this? Well, we can sort of picture convolution for now as this black box. It applies some kind of filter to an input signal, and it gives us back an output signal that's similar to the input, but modified in some way. We, of course, design these filters so that they have desirable effects. But that's just one perspective on convolution. I think one of the main themes of this section is that there are many perspectives on convolution. I wanted to introduce you to the idea of convolution as adding special effects to a signal because that's really intuitive and it's immediately obvious how it's practical. But with deep learning, the perspective is going to be different. We're not doing convolution to add special effects to an image or audio. We're doing convolution because it's going to transform the data in a useful way such that it'll be useful for computer vision tasks like image classification. And since this is deep learning, keep in mind that human design filters won't do. For deep learning, we want to use backpropagation to learn which filters are best. And because of this, the output might be something that looks weird to us, but is meaningful for the computer. So the filters we just looked at are very intuitive to us humans because they produce aesthetically pleasing results. But for machine learning, aesthetically pleasing is not a requirement. The neural network is capable of learning whatever it needs to in order to optimize its objective. Nonetheless, since this section is just for learning about convolution, we are going to look at filters that actually make sense to us. We can also see that convolution works on both one dimension and two dimensions. Sound is a 1D signal. It's just the amplitude of a sound wave at different points in time. Images are 2D signals. It's the light intensity at a particular XY coordinate on an image. Typically, you have three different color channels, red, green, and blue. And when you put these on top of each other, you get a full color image. What you can do is take the average of the red, green, and blue color channels, and you get a black and white image. In later lectures, we'll look at this concept more in depth, and we'll even implement some of these filters. But I promise you no math in this lecture, so this is it for now.